This episode of Poker Class is sponsored by .deck.co.uk, your number one place to go for all of your Pokemon TCG needs in the UK and Europe. This new online portal features all of the resources a competitive Pokemon player needs to succeed in the competitive scene. Whether it's card singles, tournament information, accessories, or even complete tournament ready decks that you need, Dot Deck is where you need to be. Right now we have everyone's favourite deck, Duran, at just under £95. That includes 4 Collector, Junk Arm, Catcher, Sleeves and a deck box for just £95. So make sure you head over to www.deck.co.uk after the episode to grab yourself a bargain. Hey everybody and welcome to episode 58 of Poker Class. This week I haven't been able to get an episode out on the Saturday, but that's only because I've been at tournaments two Saturdays in a row, but I'm able to bring you both in reports in one episode today. One with very good results. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. So Saturday the 7th brought us to Nottingham City Championships, set to be one of the busiest of the series, so things would have to go well to get top 8 and secure some points. We had enough players in Masters for a nice kicker all the way to 8th place, which meant that everyone in the top 8 would guarantee at least some championship points. Going into Cities, I was still unsure what to play since there are so many decks out there at the moment, so I decided to stick with Breshram Typhlosion a couple more times since it's served me well so far. The biggest changes to my list were taking out the 119 Tails in favour of 2 Rocky Helmet, one of my personal favourite cards right now since it tips the Magnazone and anything Eviolite -like matchups back in your favour. I also decided to play a single Smeagle just to give it a spin. The retreat cost is manageable because of Afterburner and gives you another basic to the already low count you have. So enough of the list and straight onto the report. Round 1 was against Luke Williams playing Magnazone Electric. This matchup was still kind of hit and miss, depending on how many KOs they can get with Thunderous and how long it takes me to hit Rocky Helmet, and this game did not go according to plan whatsoever. He went first and started Thunderous to my Smeagol. Thanks to Smeagol, I'm able to keep track of his hand, which wasn't strong, but the top decks he got allowed him to evolve from Magnemite to Magneton, and then into Magnazone on turn 3. This allowed him to use Magnetic Draw to start hitting all of the Junk Arms, Catchers, and switches necessary to avoid me stalling behind his Electric, to pick up some pace, and by the time I have Typhlosion out, he takes his sixth prize. So less than a great start to the day, I have to win out the rest of my games to have a definite place in top cut, and my next game is against Derek Wheatley playing Crobat Valvlum. This game I start Smeagol again, which happens to be my saving grace this game. Since he's playing Valbloom along with his stage 2, he ran Professor Elm's training method to get his lines out quicker, but that left me open to use them two turns in a row via Portrait to get my Quilabas out on turn 2, rather than having to fish them out while he gets a turn 2 Valbloom. Despite my fast Typhlosions under Trainer Lock, I had to play carefully to keep energy in play while retreating around and attacking his Crobats to sit at annoying 130 HP. This game does come down to the wire though when Jirachi hits the field. I have one prize left to his three and attempts to carry my active rush round with Tyrogue, flips going his way and then devolve my two Typhlosions for the game. This works for around two turns but the last flip goes in my favour and I'm able to take the KO on the Tyrogue to go to 1-1. So I'm set for top cut still and I'm up against Ben Hall and he's playing Durant, one of my favourite matchups to play. It's not an auto win that everyone expects since you do need to watch out for all kinds of tricks such as Rainbow Energy, Seeker and many other things they can spring on you before you take all of your prizes. Luckily for me, he starts with a mulligan showing Metal Energy and Dual Ball, so I just start with a single Cyndaquil rather than the usual Reshiram that's sitting in my hand. From here I just wait out getting a Typhlosion onto the field which happens by about turn 3 and I can start one hit carrying Durant while piling enough energy onto it to avoid any crushing hammer shenanigans. This means I can take 6 swift prizes before even half my deck is gone and I can safely move on to 2-1. Up next is Johnny Hall and he's playing Magnazone Typhlosion which is a very tough matchup for me since he will have that extra big hitting attacker while I'm capped at 120 without plus power help. Rocky Helmet will help me out here to keep on top of the Magnazones though. This match goes as planned, with both of us getting decent setups and he's able to get rid of one of my Typhlosions early on, forcing me to find another one to put onto the bench before he takes out the other one with Magnazone. 
A lucky sage brings me my second Typhlosion, but my resources are already running thin, and he's got three of his own Typhlosions ready to start taking away my energy attachments every single turn. We exchange KOs since I'm struggling to keep up with the one hit KOs, but I'm able to pull off a KO on enough Typhlosions to stay two prizes ahead by the time time is called. He has to take two more prizes just to tie the game, which I make it harder for him to do since I have no energy and no way to take a prize. This works out in my favour and time saves me from the full game. Kinda sucks for the other player, but that's another way to win the game and leads me on to 3-1. Next up is Liz Roberts who's playing Durant, so I'm looking forward to taking on another Ant. This time I already know she's playing the deck, so I just start with the lone Cyndaquil and begin attaching energy. I have the turn 2 Typhlosion in hand, but her start is really slow since she's lacking the Collector, or dual ball flips to get any decent devours on my deck. I am forced to play Juniper at one point to fish for my third energy to attack with, but since she missed the initial devours, it didn't hurt too much. With Typhlosion up front and carrying a Duran every single turn, I'm able to safely take 6 prizes to move on to 4-1. So I'm feeling good to make top cut, but I need to win this next one to have a definitive place, and up next is Tamal Cameron with Magnazone Eels. Things don't get off great for him and starts with a lone Thunderous going first. I get the best start with Collector and Sage in hand, but he's forced to use his second turn to just make a simple Disaster Bolt KO. This sets me up nicely for the second turn Donk, and from a Sage I get exactly what I need to get a Typhlosion into play, energy into the discard pile to Afterburner to the active, and a Chatch from my hand for the Blue Flare KO. Bit of a disappointing game, but at least we're both into top cut quite safely. So I finish on 5-1, which was not how the day was looking for me from the start, and I'm guaranteed at least some championship points for this one, and my game for top 8 is against Aiden Wardle playing Zekrom. This matchup is usually okay for me because I can stabilise after the first few turns of aggro attacking on their part, and use my two ends to keep them under control for the latter part, but things don't really go to plan that nicely. Game 1 I start with a lone Kleffer going second, for the 6th time today by the way, to his Zekrom. And as you can expect, he just attached double colourless, plays plus power and announces outrage for the quick game one. Not the best start, but at least I got a choice in the fact of going first in the next game. This one gets off to a much better start with turn one collector and the ability to get Typhlosion and blue flare going by turn two. But then he poker gears for a judge and things get nasty. I draw into three Pokemon and an energy and he goes crazy with bolt strikes every single turn while I draw dead for the next few turns. By the time I've drawn a communication to get Kleffer recycling my hand and a Typhlosion onto the field, he's down to his last prize and takes an easy capture prize to finish things off. Both games end within about 20 minutes, so not the best, but now I've got 10 championship points to take with me to the next few cities. So overall, I was pleased with where I came, even though things didn't go my way in Top Cut. The next weekend brought Sutton Coldfield cities, and here's a quick rundown of what happened when I took along the same list as Nottingham for the last time. We had a small amount of Masters, but still had a top 4 cut, which meant we had to make 4-1 to have a definite place, or not at all. Round 1 was against Ben Hall, playing the same deck from the week previous, Duran, and it ended pretty much the same as that week. I managed to get a turn 2 Typhlosion and start running through all his Durants while dividing for less than 4 every turn. This puts me at a swift 1-0, and I'm on to the next game. Round 2 I get paired against someone playing Hydreigon Electro, which was kind of intimidating with 150 HP, but my quick start in this one, along with his poor energy mites, forced the game into my favour. Smeagol allowed me to use 4 Sages in the first 2 opening turns, which netted me the cards I needed to get Blue Flare rolling as soon as possible. His energy might gave him 0 energy, and I was able to capture around the lone Hydreigon to take all 6 prizes before time is called. On to 2-0, and looking good. Next up was George Boone with Magnazone Electric, a matchup that is so close, made even closer when we both get decent starts. The game goes all the way down to time and I have no Typhlosions on the field due to one of my Cyndaquils being one of my two last prizes, stopping me from doing so. He's running out of energy and I still have two left in my free card deck, but failed to draw any to take a cheap KO with two Junk Arms available in my hand. This means he was able to safely take a Lost Burn KO on my Reshiram, with me not being able to tie it up and take two prizes in one turn, meaning I'm down to 2-1. Round 3 I'm against Tommy Roberts playing the Mirror. His build is a lot different to mine however and has thick Ninetales lines along with Super Odd and he gets a quick start to boot. I have a horrid hand and force to Juniper away 3 catches to start picking up speed, but by the time I do, he has 3 Typhlosions in play, ready to put energy where they liked, and Blue Flare for all of his prizes. 
This left me at 2-2, but with a very high resistance. So depending on the next set of results, I could make it into top cut as the only 3-2 if I win my next game. My last opponent of the day was Derek from the weekend before, but he's not playing Barbloom this time. He's brought along Thunderous Zekrom Electric with Max Eviolite, which is going to be tough to take the prizes needed to stay ahead. Things get really close to me decking out while two prizes are ahead, and my last Junkarma communication are prized, so I can't take my deck that little bit bigger. Luckily for me, I'm able to stop him taking a prize going into time, which means I can't lose on prizes, but if time gets called on his turn and I get the extra two, I'm definitely going to deck out. Luckily for me, time is called on my turn, giving me just the one extra turn, and I'm able to Typhlosion his energy away to stop him from taking prizes. This puts me at 3-2 and I finish at 5th seed of a top 4, which I can't really complain about. So Reshiram Typhlosion has just about run its course and bought me some very consistent results. There's one more cities I'm definitely going to this Saturday in Crawley with the Dot Deck team, and make sure you check back here for match coverage of all the events in a few days time. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the matches we recorded from Nottingham Cities, make sure you rate, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you all next week with my final Cities Report.